So I think of my teaching uh, more broadly than just the courses that um, I'm assigned. Uh, the Sister Insiders is a group for graduate students who are racialized women and recognizing my own experience as a graduate student, not having a group of like-minded folks that I could talk to in my faculty. I would always go out to other uh, areas of the university to connect uh, with racialized women. And so I wanted to create that space where we could talk about um, readings that are particular to um, sport, leisure, kinesiology, but also just broad, more broadly equity, anti-racism, feminism. And so it's an opportunity for, for us to celebrate each other and celebrate the accomplishments of the graduate students. Sometimes, you know, especially now, I think, you know, if you have a defense and there's no audience and then you turn your computer off and then you're like, great, you know, it's an amazing accomplishment, but the celebration is kind of lost in the online environment. So um, that's what that group does. It's really a, a space for us to be together. And uh, we begin each of those sessions with 30 minutes of movement. And so I'm, uh, uh, again, coming back to the embodied learning, I'm interested in how when we Whenever I finish a class, um, there's this kind of um, laughter, excitement. Uh, I've entered many classes and it's quiet at the beginning and then at the end, there's all this chatter. And so I wanted to kind of capture that in a uh, academic setting. Uh, so we do 30 minutes of movement at the beginning and then um, I feel like that sets the stage that literally warms people up for whatever discussion we're going to have afterwards. And similar with the Learning to Lead project, that's focused more on undergraduate students but the structure is to have um, movement practice and then have the, the practitioners, the teachers, um, lead a discussion. So for example, excuse me, we might have a, a, a Caribbean dance teacher come in and do a soca dance class and then um, talk to us about imposter phenomenon. And so she's, you know, demonstrating her skills and her expertise and the connections that she's made through her own practice uh, between these uh, concepts that are of um, interest and concern to students um, as well as um, centering the moving body. The thing that is challenging to me is um, when students are resistant to that. And, you know, I think because of my own experience and it is my bias and my privilege that I like to move and that I like, I think that, you know, being in a space where we were catching balls or where we are doing push-ups, that's um, exciting to me. And as you're saying, I have that lived experience. I know that it works and it would be great to see the research that um, underpins that. Um, but when there are students that either are um, you know too too triggered or um, unable to um, to let go um, in Caribbean dance we say free up <laughs> like if they if they can't free up then how can we uh, include them as well because I do know that um, in some in some classes I've tried like snapping games or clapping games or like to like try to get uh, rhythm and sound into the space and um, there are some students that are <laughs> not having it and I don't know what to do with them like do I just force them the way I was forced to sit and be quiet are you going to be forced now to be loud and move uh, I'm not sure exactly how to navigate that tension so I would really like to know from a trauma-informed space because I imagine those people who are most resistant uh, probably um, have some history that is making them um, resist uh, me as a teacher or that practice um, so I'm not I'm not sure how to overcome that but I would love to know more in my very first year when I was in that lecture theater, um, that was when I did some of the snapping and clapping games, and we essentially built a kind of choreography over the semester. And so, you know, the very first class, I was like, I just need you to do this. <laughs> if you can snap with me, that's great. And there's 250 of them, so some people weren't snapping, but I do think, you know, over the over the semester, you know, practicing rhythm and um, that unity that it created and then like doing a kind of orchestra like getting people to play off of each other um, I think it does help to break down that um, the any pressure I guess that people are in resistance that some people are feeling and the work that I did with uh, Ellen Kerr we were trying to think about how to shift 
uh, the, particularly the evaluative culture, because I think part of the reason why the class seems threatening, especially at U of T, is because students um, believe that the stakes are so high at every moment, right? Anything that I could say could decrease my mark or decrease the way the professor thinks of me or, you know, make me not valued in this group assignment. And so there's all this pressure for marks. And if we can um, remove that or uh, lessen that stress um, through um, bringing the body in, I think that will help. The, it might actually help with the marks in the end, uh, but it definitely will uh, lessen that pressure.